Hello, and welcome to AIM International's preparatory tutorials for the Information Certification Exam. I'm Steve Weissman, Principal Consultant at Holly Group and a certified AIM training instructor in the realm of content, process, and information management. I'll be your guide as we review the exam's major domains of expertise, and I'll tell you all you need to know to earn that passing grade. Today's subject is Requirements Definition, a key part of this special certification which AIM created to support you as you solve your organization's existing information-related problems and plan for its future. For 60 years, AIM has been the leading nonprofit association helping users understand how to best manage documents, content, records, and business processes. Requirements definition is about defining the scope and constraints of an information management process, solution, or program, and collecting input from all stakeholders about what they need the solution to do. Part of the Plan and Implement Knowledge Domain, one of six within the certification program, this module will discuss the role of business and system requirements, requirements gathering techniques, identifying stakeholders, and system inventorying. Business requirements are the operational needs called for by, well, business users, and they usually are expressed in terms of broad outcomes rather than specific functions. Although design standards may be referenced, Specific design elements are usually outside the scope here, as the exercise is not primarily concerned with how to meet the expressed needs through the IT development process. Best gathered early in the solution development cycle, business requirements may encompass prerequisites for both functional and non-functional needs. Functional requirements are those that describe the actual functionality required to accomplish the stated business requirements. For example, integration between the capture engine and the repository, for out-of-the-box compliance with Dublin Core metadata management, LDAP-enabled security management, and so forth. Non-functional requirements are more qualitative in nature and may include the likes of a certain interface look and feel, or the solution's total cost of ownership, the solution provider's knowledge of your vertical industry, etc. System requirements, on the other hand, lay out the expectations for technology and infrastructure, and they can be more granular than their business counterparts. These too should be gathered early in the solution development cycle and may relate either to the technology itself or to the domain of expertise. Technical requirements include those regarding the likes of performance, maintainability, adaptability, reliability, availability, security, and scalability. Domain requirements, on the other hand, reflect needs that are endemic to the area in which the system or organization is active. For instance, a records management system requirement for a military agency likely will call for compliance with the standard DOD 5015.2, which is specific both to records management and the military. Gathering requirements of both types can be done using a variety of techniques, and like as not, you'll use more than one when the time comes. Regardless of the precise mix, it's important to capture the inputs in a way that's fully traceable, so the source of each requirement can be found and any changes made can be tracked. Here's a list of some of the more popular techniques. Simple observation, brainstorming, formal surveys, personal interviews, focus groups, scenario development, personas, which are possibly fictitious characters created to represent different user types, user analysis, a similar creature identifying and characterizing potential users of a system, task analysis, studying how work gets done, and gap analysis, comparing actual with potential performance. It's also important to involve representatives of all stakeholder communities in the requirements development process. These are people who have a valid interest in the process, whether or not they're affected directly by it, or even work for the organization itself. These may include the likes of senior management, business unit managers, legal staff, records managers, IT personnel, end users, business partners, and investors. The last major piece of requirements gathering involves inventorying the existing system to identify any dependencies on other systems, or other systems that depend on it. This way care can be taken to manage the impact on applications and databases that may be outside the direct scope of work but nonetheless will be affected by it. Besides analyzing current use, a study should be made of potential future overlaps as well, so as clear and predictable a roadmap as possible can be developed. 
This module has discussed defining the scope and constraints of an information management process, solution, or program, and collecting input from all stakeholders about what they need the solution to do. The elements covered include the role of business and system requirements, requirements gathering techniques, identifying stakeholders, and system inventorying. Next, you may wish to review the section on solution design. The material you have just reviewed is part of a broader program of study that prepares you to take the information certification exam. This proctored test consists of 100 multiple choice questions and is delivered electronically by Prometric. You'll have two hours to complete it, and upon passing, you'll earn a professional certification that's valid for three years. For more information, please visit www.aim.org slash certification. Thank you.